This is Jupiter Today for the 13th of March, 2015. Jupiter Today is a daily podcast focusing attention on the dynamic Jupiter system for the purpose of monitoring activity. At zero hours UTC, EO begins the day transiting Jupiter and going to be moving into quadrant three heading west. Europa starts today in quadrant four heading east. And Ganymede is also in Quadrant 4, heading east. And Callisto spends all day in Quadrant 2, heading west. At 0 hours 57 minutes, the transit of EO ends. And at 1.43 UTC, the shadow of EO egresses. From 3.26 to 3.31 UTC, EO eclipses Europa. And as you can see, that eclipse, Io is on our side, the Earth side of Jupiter, and Europa is on the far side of Jupiter. It's a 4.5 minute event with an impact parameter of 0.403 arc seconds and an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.494 magnitudes. Unfortunately, they're very, very close to, to Jupiter from our line of sight, 8.7 arc seconds from Jupiter. And the two moons are 37.35 arc seconds apart. At 4.07 UTC, Europa moves behind Jupiter. By six hours UTC, Io is now firmly in quadrant three, heading west. And Europa is moving behind Jupiter and going into quadrant one, heading east. At 7.31, to 739 UTC, EO occults Ganymede. And as you can see again, that's this is about 731 UTC on EO and about 731 UTC on Ganymede. You can see that that's a, a long distance for an occultation. That's an 8.5 minute event with an impact parameter of 0.208 arc seconds and an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.354 magnitudes and it's a good distance away from Jupiter as well, 95.21 arc seconds so definitely a photographic or photometric event there at 8.34 Europa reappears from Jupiter's shadow and then from 9.52 to 10.05 UTC, EO eclipses Ganymede. That's a nice long event, 13.6 minutes, with an impact parameter of 0.1 arc seconds and a nice deep eclipse, 0.836 magnitudes. Distance there is 67.7 arc seconds from Jupiter, and the two moons are 39.13 arc seconds apart. And again, that's a nice long shadow. And then at 12 hours UTC, EO is past its western elongation and is now in quadrant 4, heading east. Europa is now firmly in quadrant 1, heading east. At 1357, Ganymede goes through its apogee, and that's the furthest distance it is from Jupiter in this orbit. And that's 1,072,736.2 kilometers. And then at 15.06 UTC, EO goes through an apogee, and that distance is 423,547.5 kilometers. And then at 15.54, Ganymede moves behind Jupiter. And by 18 hours, Ganymede is still behind Jupiter and going to be moving into quadrant one, heading east. At 1957 UTC, EO moves behind Jupiter. At 2248 UTC, Ganymede reappears from Jupiter's shadow. At 2303, EO reappears from Jupiter's shadow. And then from 2316 to 2343, EO eclipses Ganymede again, and this is even a longer eclipse, 
27.4 minutes long. And as you can see, now both of the moons are on the far side of Jupiter doing the same eclipse action. It's got an impact parameter of 0.173 arc seconds and a fairly nice drop in magnitude, 0.586 magnitudes. And it's also a good distance away from Jupiter, 49.08 arc seconds. And Io and Ganymede are 22.14 arc seconds apart. And then by zero hours UTC tomorrow, Io has successfully moved behind Jupiter and is now in quadrant one, heading east. And Europa is about to reach its eastern elongation and move into quadrant two and start heading west. Orbital ribbons for today. These are the spatial and temporal connections between the four Galilean moons. So here's the connection between Io and Europa, and Io and Ganymede, Io and Callisto. That's a really nice looking twist there. Sorry that Callisto is a little bit out of view tonight. There's the connection between Europa and Ganymede, and Europa and Callisto, and finally Ganymede and Callisto. And then I just combine all of these to get that for today. And that's a really nice shape. 24 hours of Jupiter sky, standing on the equator of Jupiter at a longitude of zero degrees, and just rotating with Jupiter. So over a 24 hour period, rotate a couple of times. There's Callisto over in quadrant two, heading west. From Jupiter's point of view, Callisto is getting closer to the sun. There's Ganymede going to be moving behind Jupiter. There's Eo going into Jupiter's shadow. We don't see that. We see it go behind Jupiter first, but we do see it pop back out like it just did. The red spot crosses Jupiter's meridian twice today. First at 619 and the second at 1614 UTC. There was a new image sent along via email today. And there was no new radio data and no new papers. So at zero hours UTC, the position of Jupiter on Earth's celestial sphere is a right ascension of nine hours, four minutes, 58.4 seconds and a declination of positive 17 degrees, 42 minutes, 54 seconds. The angular separation between Jupiter and the Sun is 141.606 degrees, and that's 1.081 degrees less than what it was yesterday. The phase angle today is 6.635 degrees, and that's 0.161 degrees greater than what it was yesterday. The distance between Jupiter and the Earth is 677,399,676 kilometers, and that's 1,475,734 kilometers greater than what it was yesterday. And that gives a radial velocity between Jupiter and the Earth of 61,488.92 kilometers per hour and that's 1,486.75 kilometers per hour faster than what it was yesterday. The distance between the Sun and Jupiter 
is 799,250,327 kilometers. We're slowly, ever so slowly, getting to the 800 million kilometer mark. We'll get there in a few days. The radial distance between Jupiter and the Sun changed by 44,825 kilometers today. And that gives a radial velocity between Jupiter and the Sun of 1,867.71 kilometers per hour. And that's 0.54 kilometers per hour slower than what it was yesterday. The central meridian at zero hours UTC, CM1, 115.71 degrees. CM2, 229.47 degrees. CM3, 147.11 degrees. The time of this recording is 2.07 UTC on the 13th of March, 2015. So please subscribe, and thank you to those who are subscribing. You can send your comments and questions and suggestions and images to the email shown. And until tomorrow, I bid you peace.